What is up, everyone, and welcome to episode 34 of The Trainer Scoop, a podcast dedicated to helping individuals passionate about fitness improve in life and lifting. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, fraternity brother, and the man that's taking the model- the fitness modeling scene by storm, Mr. Nick Tobel. Nick, say what's up to the people. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that warm introduction, David. It's, I, it's kind of, um, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, nostalgic right now because I, I was on one of the original um, podcasts way back in the day when we were living in the house together, doing all of our fun. Uh, well, no, you weren't living in the house, but we were in the, in the fraternity, right. all that good stuff. So right was up that, the Arnold Classic. That was the year you competed in the Arnold. Was that 2017? It was. Yeah. It was 2017 because I remember we, we chatted a lot about the diet and like training protocols and things. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a that was a great episode. And I, I go back and listen to that. Like I listened to it in 2020, just because I really enjoyed that one. Uh, that was probably the favorite podcast we did. That show is called the Barbells Books and Betterment Show. You can yep. still find that one on iTunes if anyone's interested to go back and, and hear uh, way back when about uh, what Nick did for the Arnold, because that was a really cool experience for you, man. A young Nick Popel's thoughts. On, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing diet and nutrition and uh, how to manage it all with an engineering degree at the same time. So dude, was good. dude, that's, you know, and that's kind of what I want to get into today. Um, kind of like the shift from that engineering whole scope that you did to what you do now. So I'm really excited to get into a couple different topics, uh, delve deep into the mind of Nick Topol. All right. How deep are we going to go? No one knows. <laughs> never. They, they'll never know. <laughs> Nick, one thing I've always admired about you, man, is no matter what it is, it could be a, something, as I remember, we talked about Halo. It could be from Halo to your training and nutrition to right now, it seems like the stock market and your work, you just go really deep and you try to do those things at the highest level you can. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to, to kind of getting into all that. But first of all, I feel like a little bit of an introduction is, uh, is needed. So do you want to tell everybody what you do now, kind of a little bit about yourself, all that? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's funny. I'm always trying to refine the pitch because my parents, my mom never, never really, I don't think they understand exactly what I do or <laughs> how I make money or anything like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've had, I've a very interesting story. So I, um, you know, I went to Ohio State University with you, obviously, and I graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering and minor computer science, I had specific focuses in like advanced systems, thermodynamics. And so when I graduated, um, I got a degree, I was working in the petroleum industry as an integrity analyst and I had this major portfolio. I mean, very expensive projects, like hundreds of millions of dollars to, <laughs> and to kind of put your, you know, put your mind in the right perspective there. Um, so I, you know, I start off as this really hardcore engineer, but you brought, you, you had, you mentioned something that's, that's totally true about me. I have a very kind of all or nothing personality. I have really extreme interests. Um, I've never felt that I'm, I've never felt that I am or want to be like a one dimensional person who, you know, just focuses on one or two things. So I, I took my, you know, my engineering skills, my analytical um, problem solving skills and being a little bit obsessed about data and things. And I applied that to the health and wellness space, you know, the, the fitness. So, um, so I graduated college and at the same time, I, I think within like six months, I had also gotten my pro card in bodybuilding. So I coached myself to my pro card and then signed um, a big sponsorship with BSN Supplements, these guys. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then I started coaching a lot of, I started my coaching business and, and that is all kind of integrated in this really interesting social media space, which at the same time, so I got my pro card, um, signed some sponsorships, started coaching, and then also do, started doing a lot of fitness modeling. And so fitness modeling is very um, closely tied to uh, like the men's physique obviously, you know, that makes sense. The way I always describe men's physique bodybuilding is like the look good on the beach style of like bodybuilding. Um, so I was, you know, as this engineering career was budding, my fitness career was blasting off at the same time. And, you know, I'm getting calls that, hey man, can you come to LA tomorrow? Uh, we want to have you in this music video or like, hey, we'd like to do a, a calendar shoot with you in New York this weekend. Um, or, hey, can we have you in Miami for a couple of weeks to do, you know, so-and-so. And I was like, no, I, I 
I can't guys I have, you know, only two weeks of vacation and um, it's just, you know, I have, I have professional work obligations and things. And so it was quickly becoming more of a hobby or it was, it was evolving out of a hobby to this professional career. And eventually got to a point where I was like, Hey, um, I've been able to apply a lot of my project management skills, my analytical problem solving skills, um, data, spreadsheets, statistical analysis to basically engineer the body like a thermodynamic system, which it is. And so I just, I was able to apply those passions and those, those skills that I developed into the health and wellness space. And it's been a lot more fulfilling. And so I work on kind of my own companies. Um, uh, the model trainers is, is kind of my bread and butter right now. So I work with them. My coworker, Sean Alexander, we provide a, a massive global uh, coaching program um, to clients all across the world. We have digital programs, in-person coaching, online coaching. And so I do a lot of coaching. I do a lot of fitness modeling. I have some sponsorships and it's all kind of tied in through uh, social media. So, yeah. um, and, and recently I've been doing a lot of speaking. Actually, I just spoke at two universities a couple of weeks ago, which was uh, pretty fun for me. Um, invited my parents to that one. I was like, hey, maybe, maybe you guys can <laughs> try to understand a little bit better about what I do with my life. So um, started off as kind of this small town Ohio farm boy, got an engineering degree, and then just kind of exploded into this really interesting uh, fitness career. So definitely, man. So a couple of things I want to to hit on there. First and foremost, though, I always find it so interesting when people like yourself where you know, your, your uh, formal education background wasn't in like exercise science, exercise physiology. You always did your due diligence. Don't get me wrong. You're probably more knowledgeable than just about any undergrad uh, in those, in those uh, areas. But when they, when people like you, or maybe like a high level business person applies that mindset toward fitness, whether it's the engineering, the business mindset toward fitness, it's always so interesting for me to see. Um, And I feel like, those are some of the most successful individuals within that space. Yeah. Uh, You you bring up a great point. Um, You know, I'm largely self-taught. I had some really good mentors. Um, uh, You know, I applied my, my academic experience in engineering to the health and wellness space. I took a number of like master's level sports nutrition classes at Ohio state. I actually had to beg the professor to let me in (laughs) because I was an engineering, (laughs) I was an engineering major. But so I, I took some number of classes there. I got all my certifications and stuff. But but you're right. It's absolutely. It is not my my formal education. But the one thing that I find fascinating is I do a lot of uh, like CEO level personal coaching, executive level coaching, and it's really fascinating. A lot of the the unified because you know so these are extremely high achieving individuals, you know presidents of companies, CEOs, congressmen, people like that. And there's, there's a unifying, they're all kind of unique and a little quirky and weird, right? But they, they have this one unifying quality. It's just they have this un, um, undeniable work ethic, right? And they just understand that success is a mindset. And it's so cool because I, I, you know, I get to step into each one of their lives for just a few moments each week and kind of talk to them and see. And um, they just, you know, the fire in their eyes, the work ethic and stuff, they just, they take that. And you can tell those people are, they're not just successful at one thing they do. They're successful at everything they do because they can harness that that willpower to apply to whatever they're focused on at the moment. Definitely. I can relate to that. Maybe not on the exact same level, but when I was out in New Jersey training with like lawyers and doctors, like it's it's very cool to kind of like step into their realm and, and see how they kind of process things, think about it, and then apply that toward fitness in that yeah. So yeah, that's a cool, cool observation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So another thing I'm interested to hear. Uh, you said you were speaking to some universities. What was that like, man? It was cool. Um, so these um, Susquehanna University and Bucknell University had reached out to my um, my sponsor that I work with, BSN, and they'd asked if I'd be willing to present to their um, to their marketing class, <clears throat> basically about social media influencing and the role that um, somebody like myself has in building with building the you know BSN supplements brand online. Um, so. I presented uh, to both of their kind of individually to both of their marketing classes. And then they had me later in the evening for this joint university webinar. They had just a bunch, it was actually pretty cool. They had a bunch of people on the, um, on the call and like the Dean introduced me and they just kind of gave me the floor to like talk about social media and how the interconnectedness of, of fitness and the supplement industry for about an hour. Yeah. And, and Man, it's cool. It's- I just kind of see myself as, you know, I'm the same person every day. I, um, 
but it's interesting. I always find it fascinating. That I, I've been getting a lot more of these opportunities. I, I think it's cool that people are starting to maybe value my opinion on certain things. And I just find it fascinating because, you know, in my own head, it's like, oh yeah, I'm just Nick. I just do my own thing here in Columbus. And um, yeah, that was a cool opportunity. And we're actually lining up a few more um, for the BSN side of things. So, yeah. So one thing that's kind of an observation from my space and just seeing like your social media presence too, is I wonder how many of your followers really like realize the high level that you do things at and just like the approach you take, you know, like obviously you've, you, you're shredded, you look great on social media and they, I mean, I feel like a lot of people probably identify as like, damn, that dude looks great. He's shredded, but I wonder, you know, that, that's interesting to me. Um, just they a, probably think I'm a meat head. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, definitely some brain gains along there too, which is cool. Yeah. Now I, I embrace it every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I make fun of the meathead stereotype, but I always try to add more um, substance to like my social media presence. I think people appreciate that. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I got the Rubik's cube. I'm always doing the Rubik's cube. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you were always on the Rubik's cube. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a good mental uh, detox and I get stressed. I just rip it out and just yeah, <laughs> flex on everybody, not with the muscles, but with the brain gains. Too. Yeah, brain gains. <laughs> it's not just a meathead anymore, boys. <laughs> so, Nick, can you talk a little bit about taking that jump from leaving the, I would guess, very lucrative and, you know, just in itself, like a great position with the, uh, with, with, I mean, marathon, I think. I don't know if you care if I say that, but. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Um you know, as an, as an engineer by heart, I'm a very risk averse person, right? You look at things like, oh my gosh, you know, numbers in the bank accounts, what's it going to, how much money do I need to, to, you know, to live on my own? What's the fallback plan? Am I kind of throwing everything down the drain? And it was certainly very stressful for me. It was a tough decision to make, but I, I have, I, I have not looked back mm -hmm. for one day wishing that I would have done it differently. I actually, that was kind of one of the biggest drivers for the decision that I had to make was, am I going to regret not seizing this opportunity? Because mm -hmm. um, in a year it's going to be gone if I don't, if I don't t seize it and nurture it at the moment. Um, so in the, in the moment, it would took a lot of, I honestly kind of took a lot of balls to be like, Hey, you know what? Yeah, let's go see what this thing is all about. Yeah. But looking back at it, I've realized that I am always willing to gamble on myself in any situation. Um, and really that's what I was doing is really just saying, you know, Hey, I have an idea of what I want this to look like. I may not have like a concrete plan. You know, I had some benchmarks. I wanted to be making a certain amount of income with my coaching and other things before I kind of stepped into it. So there was some security there, you know, I, I did it the right way, but um, I was basically, I was just willing to bet on myself say, Hey, I don't know exactly what this future holds, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to bet that I, I I'm going to figure it out. And now looking back at it, it wasn't as much, I don't think there was as much risk as, um, as I thought there was, which is kind of really eye opening for me. It's been able to apply that in a lot of different situations that I think most, most of the time we, we kind of see these, see decisions in like these absolute extremes, you know, it's either going to be a hundred percent success or it's going to crash and burn and fail. Most of the time it's kind of somewhere in the middle. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you're probably going to be all right if you have, you know, at least a decent plan in terms of what's going on. So, yeah, that was it was tough trying to come to terms with I wanted to um, do a little bit more with the fitness space and just assessing all the risk, you know, um, was difficult. But like I said, I, I still feel like I made the right decision and I'm always willing to gamble on myself in those yeah. situations. So definitely. Yeah, I always it's like just a, a story that I love to hear when people can take that leap you know, like you said, bet on yourself and, and it all pays off. So very cool to see and glad that it all worked out and you're happy, man. That's, that's what I'm most glad about. Yeah. I've been to tell you what, I've been living the life. Tra I travel quite a bit and uh, I got this nice little apartment in Columbus, beautiful floor to ceiling windows, super calm and quiet. Columbus is like super cheap cost of living close mm -hmm. to all my friends. And so I feel like uh hit the nail on the head, at least for the past year or so. Yeah. So. So with that in mind, what does a typical day in the life of Nick Topol look like? Oh man, it's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I, work, I wake up about seven 
um well you know there's there's travel schedules and then there's like at home in columbus schedules right <laughs> travel schedules completely out there <laughs> no no telling what's going on when you're traveling but yeah. on a normal day in um columbus i'm waking up about 7 seven thirty, um and i get i get right up and i drink two cups of water so i always stay hydrated that's hydration is one of the key coaching principles that we focus on like with our coaching program so i i totally follow those guidelines <laughs> i drink yeah. water right when i wake up actually i weigh myself before I wake up. So I got to get that high quality data point on my health and wellness for the day. Uh, and then I go get some water and I'd say within 10 minutes, I'm, I'm out the door walking down um, the street. So I walk for about three miles in the morning, every morning. And usually I'm listening to like market news or trying to understand like what's going on in the current geopolitical landscape. Um, what are the big plays for the day? I do a lot of uh, stock market uh, day trading. The, the primary areas for that's about 9 30 to 12 every day. So, um, now, if, we do, if I do have any client calls that I need to make, so if we have clients in London or overseas, I'll take those calls in the morning. Um, and then I'm back at my desk. I trade from about 9.30 to 12, take a break, flip it over, start working on some model trainer stuff, go through all of our client profiles, um, any, anybody who needs updates with coaching plans. And um, I do a lot of reading, a lot of uh, research articles and just kind of staying up on the most current up-to-date things. So whether that's with the stock market or with the health and wellness space, and uh, try to shut it down about 4 p.m., run to the gym and uh, get, a, get a nice workout in. I bike, bike to the gym, work out for about an hour, hour and a half, bike back from the gym. Um, my company, we, we coach some corporate fitness classes in the evening, so I'm always on the calls. And then um, just kind of, I shift gears about 8.39. And um, usually I'm just reading some more research and figuring out what I'm gonna do the next day, making the to-do list. So as you can tell, it's very structured. Like I know exactly what I'm going to be doing today at like 9.30 PM. And I like that because um, when you have consistency, when you have structure, when you have a regiment to your schedule, you can optimize it. You know, so if you know, hey, I, it takes me, um, you know, 23 minutes to walk down the street and 23 minutes to walk back. Um, I can fit that. To, I can listen to a podcast that's 20 minutes long. I can, you know, multitask here. And on the same thing too, the meal, the meal schedules, they're so consistent and structured that, you um, you can get really good at just kind of optimizing uh, your day. So I like the structure, but that's that's me as as this engineer, yeah. um, personality type. So yeah, yeah, a little bit of both, as you can tell. I do the stock market trading, research, um, classes, a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely cool, man. You have a lot of different things going, but you're able to balance it all. Balance, big key. Shout out to the SIGAP mantra. <laughs> that's right, balance man. Balance <laughs> man. Brotherly love. Yes, sir, embodying it right here. That's awesome. So as a quick aside, I got I to gotta ask you, what's been your favorite travel experience that you've been able to do for your career? I have had some cool trips, definitely. But I'd say the coolest trip that I've been on, I went to Australia for a week and a half to shoot um, uh, the swimsuit campaign for this year. And that was just awesome. It was just so fun to be on the other side of the world. I like to travel. Um, and, and the, the people who live in Australia, they're just so kind and, and welcoming. And of course the person, they all speak English, but they've got the personality, which is just fascinating to Americans. <laughs> um, but th that whole experience was, was really fun for me. And, you know, about halfway through that trip, I was, you know, sitting on the beach in a swimsuit on the other side of the world going, man, how did I end up here? <laughs> Hard work. Yeah. I'll tell you what though, that was, cr that was a crazy um, travel schedule because it's been a while now. I don't remember the exact itinerary, but it's like 18 hours to fly Yeah, over there. And then you get over there and there's this massive time change. So I remember I was, mm -hmm. I was like wide awake at four o'clock in the morning every yeah. day. Um, so it's, it's, uh, you know, and the dates changed, you know, so you're texting people who are like, you know, in the past, <laughs> text messages going back to, you know, the day before. Um, that's cool. So yeah, I got to do all the cool Australian things. Went to the zoo, saw some uh, um, koalas and giraffes and and kangaroos and and um, I actually, when I was on that trip, I went to, I was invited. I got some VIP tickets to this Mardi Gras festival, and I got to meet Dua Lipa. So that was cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's a, it's you know, and that that's a good way to highlight a lot of these like work trips. It's like a little bit of work and a lot of play, which makes yeah. it a, lot, a whole lot of fun. So. Some good networking in there too some celebrities yeah. in the mix <laughs> yeah it's cool and one thing that i always do when i travel i 
you know, obviously health and wellness is very core to like who I am. So I'm always training at, you know, different gyms, day passes and things. And, um, I, you know, I, I met all these guys at this gym in Australia and I still keep in touch with them today. It's cool just to kind of be a fly on the wall in somebody else's life. Yeah. So that's how I make friends. The gym community is cool. Oh yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Definitely. Do you have any yeah. cool trips, uh, upcoming or planned in the near future? Yeah, I'm going to Puerto Rico this Saturday. I'll be there for eight days and then heading to Las Vegas for a couple. Um, and then I'll be in New York for a week and a half. And I think the the rest of the rest of the month of uh, May, I'll be in Miami. So Dude, yeah. if you if you get a chance to train at uh in Las Vegas, which I'm sure you will, but the the new Dragon's Lair, that one looks sweet. Have you seen that gym on social media at all? I don't know if I've been there. But I've been to some really cool gyms in Las Vegas. Yeah, I exactly. feel like I feel like you would like that one. Like, there's like the Las Vegas Athletic Club, which you know it's been around for a bit. But um, what is the guy's name? The the Welsh dude that's an IFBB pro. That oh guy. oh, it's um, Flex Lewis. I yeah, didn't know that yeah. Was in Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I yeah, think I'll you would really like those. that gym. I did his. Um, he was my he he hosted a show in Nashville many years ago. That was the first show I ever competed at. Oh, really? Yeah, I got to chat with him for about 20 minutes. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. He's really, 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 really cool. And obviously, he's massive. <laughs> he's like a little cannonball of a guy. Right. Yeah, they have all those, like, Arsenal and Prime machines over there. So, man, yeah. I'm trying to go out there eventually and train there, but it would be cool. I used to go um, – so I've been to the LVAC, the Las Vegas Athletic Club, um, the one off the set, I think off the, the main strip. Yeah. It's like, it's all, it's the retro Las Vegas, like signage and like the mm-hmm. neon lights and the pink. That's cool. Yep. Yep. And then, um, the gym space has changed now, but I think up until last year, they had the city athletic club, yeah. which is because I would fly in every year for the Olympia, mm-hmm. uh, be like the booths and stuff. Right. And, um, that was kind of like the gym where all the Olympia competitors went. It was oh, so okay. cool. So they, and they, you'd walk in and they'd be doing like six photo shoots at a time in like different corners of the gym. And, and yeah. you run into, you know, five time, I, you know, Mr. Olympia champion. And then you run into, you know, four time, you know, um, Mr. Olympia men's physique champion. And just like all of these like world famous guys training around you. Everybody's competing, you know, ultra shredded shape, famous photographers everywhere. That mm-hmm. was always cool. And the gym was like, perfect for these photo shoots because um it was like super dark with like the really harsh down lighting yeah and they just had the there was a bunch of space to do photo shoots and set up and and um so that was the gym that i always went to when i went to vegas and then they then they uh i think they closed or they renamed or moved somewhere but it's, it's no longer so i'll have to add a dragon's lair to the list because i'm gonna be out there in a couple yeah of yeah man Sounds like you have some cool things coming up, though. Definitely looking forward to, to seeing it on the stories and on social media. That'll be yeah, good. Yeah, man, I always, I always tend to find myself, like, on the beach somewhere. So I'm yeah. usually not worried about <laughs> the schedule. Right. Work myself out. That'll so. be awesome, man. So yeah. to kind of to sh- shift gears from the fun stuff, I'm very interested as I'm growing my own coaching business and kind of getting exposed to the online side of working with people. How did you learn all of the current business practices that you do? Uh, was there much of a learning curve? Did you adapt to it pretty easy? Definitely interested to hear a little bit about it. Yeah, there's a few different angles you want to consider there. Um, so a lot of it was self-taught to me. It, it just in ter- obviously, you're very well qualified to, to coach, probably more qualified than I am. So like the actual technicals of coaching, there's, you know, you've got it. In terms of like the marketing and the branding, um, hmm that was something that came very or naturally to me through my social media, just building my social media presence, like one person at a time, you understand what kinds of content um, people want to see, you kind of get a pulse on, on your audience and like what personality they're expecting to hear from and like the, you know, what times to post, when to post. So there's a social media presence to it. But then I also had um, a, a coaching mentor, like a coach's coach who helped me kind of get started with my own personal um, training fitness brand. And, um, a lot of it is really just, it's, it's perfecting. Well, it depends if you, if you want to be hitting if the social media game is one thing, but then the actual, like, uh, lead to client conversion is another. And a lot of the coaching is, is really just, um, 
I would say the client or the lead to client conversion strategy is just helping the person that you're speaking to come to terms with the fact that they they need you, they want you, they need you to fix their problem. So, and that's, um, and they've realized that at some level because otherwise they wouldn't have reached out to you, ask, ask to you for help. So, but a lot of kind of the upfront dialogue that I learned from my coaching mentor was just, you know, how do you communicate with this person so that they can clearly spell out um, what they're struggling with, how they've been struggling with it and why they can't fix it on their own. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people have interest in what you're doing. And if anybody reaches out to you or makes contact with you, they have at least this, just even, even if it's small, they have an interest in hearing about what you have to do. So a lot of that, um, that convert, I, I won't call it a script, but like that conversion conversation is just helping that person formulate their own thoughts. And then I would say on the digital marketing side, uh, it's just a lot of social media games, producing, you know, content at the right times and what people want to see, you know, so when COVID came out or, you know, when COVID hit, nobody could go to the gym, for instance. Mm -hmm. So you got to stop posting gym stuff. You got to start educating people about how to train at home. Um, body weight workout plans, um, good good habits to maintain your health while, while you're at your desk, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so I had so so I kind of integrated a lot of the the techniques that I used or developed from building my own social media, and then I worked with like a coach's coach who kind of helped me put it all together to like a cash flowing machine. Nice. Mm -hmm. I would say specifically with the um, with the online coaching business, testimonials are the biggest um are the biggest driver for like lead to client mm -hmm. conversions just because the fitness space is so saturated um you know everybody and their and their mother is a you know personal trainer online and you can buy the workout plan it's like well do the results speak for themselves do they have people who are willing to put their name on it yeah uh, and yeah so i think i think that's a big one for sure and another one that we have struggled with uh, particularly with model trainers is having a very specific voice. You want to be, um, you want to be able to serve as a very specific client. Like you want to be the expert on helping soccer moms age 35 to 40 lose 20 pounds to their next vacation, right? You're going to be much more successful at working with all of those, those people within that specific niche versus just saying, Hey, I coach everybody. Yeah. Right? And the way that we had it described to us or the way that I kind of think about it is, um, it's, it's about refining that marketing pitch, understanding who, who your target audience is or who your target customer is and speaking to them directly. So if you're in a crowd, you know, if you're the back of the crowd and you just shout, Hey, how many people are going to turn around and be like, yeah, man, what's up? But if you, but if you shout, Hey, David, oh, yeah. every single David in the crowd is going to turn around and be like, yeah, man, like, did you need me for something? So that's how I try to think about the, like the marketing strategies when it comes to social media, it's so saturated. You have to very, have a very specific message message to very specific audience. And then that helps you, you know, you get so good at optimizing that one process for that one client, the results just explode. Then you get all these crazy testimonials. So yeah, it's specific messaging and then testimonials speak for themselves. That's Most like powerful. Right there. Yeah. Very man. good advice. Very good advice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like the analogy of the crowd and I'm definitely going to have to steal that and think about it as I uh, refine my process, man. So I appreciate that advice, you know, definitely hits home for me and all the people listening that are trying to do the same thing. So it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's been cool to see, you know, even back in 2017, when we did the first podcast, you know, you had a, a decent social media following then, but how you can, how you've been able to leverage that uh, to really, you know, go after your goals and, and make this thing a whole career. It's been really cool to see. Yeah, it hasn't been a, hasn't been a linear path. There's been a lot of it's about a left turns, right turns, going backwards for a little bit, circles and stuff. But we're trending in the right direction, which is the most important. So, mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I would mention too, with something that we started focusing on a lot more heavily, is the production of free content. Um, so, if you're trying to basically harness a social media following and kind of convert that to paying audience. You want to produce consistent free content. Um, so basically, and it, and it needs to be high value where these people can like take it without paying anything, implement it and be like, oh my gosh, this works. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine if I was actually paying this person to help me. Um, and then the other thing too, is you want to have a community where all of your like clients and like people working on your programs can interact so they can be part of, so they can feel part of yeah. uh, something larger. 
Um, and for a lot of reasons, right? So they can share their successes. Like, dude, if you lost 30 pounds, you want to tell everybody about it, you know? And, and of course, everybody's going to be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So great for you. You inspire me to lose my own 30 pounds. But also on those days where you're like, I just, I don't have any motivation. I'm not making any progress. You get on like a Facebook community and people lift you up or you can harness other people's successes for your own motivation. Nice. So, yeah. So we have a Facebook community that we go live in um, two times a week. And then on the model trainers, Instagram, we do free um, IG live, like Q and A's or like trainer talk discussions where we just talk about um, interesting topics. And mm -hmm. then um, if we can get your email, um, we'll put you in basically our, our drip funnel, our email campaign. And that we just like informative, really interesting emails, like every couple of days. So it just keeps the presence, like keeps the brand constantly present in your mind while continuing to add like free value eventually gets to a tipping point where they've consumed so much, they're ready to take it to the next step and invest. So from a digital marketing standpoint, I think those, those are some bigger things that I would focus on too. Free content and then um, the community, having a community once you have a large enough group. All right, guys, rewind it back. I think Nick just laid out your, uh, your path to success there. That was really good, man. I appreciate you going into all that depth and yeah, I'll save you like, I'll save you like nine months of trial and error that we yeah. had to go through. <laughs> yeah, man. And kind of like, you, money too. right. Kind of like you with the stock market, I've been really into listening to podcasts, YouTube videos, reading about, you know, business and marketing, just because it's not necessarily my strongest suit, but I'm trying to learn about it to, to yeah. advance my business. So yeah, yeah, I think echoing all the things that I've heard thus far and then adding some new strategies in there. That was, that was awesome, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, hopefully I can uh, help you out a little bit. Definitely, definitely. I may even, I may even have to run into you into the gym sometime soon, get some new ideas for training. Cause I'm like, we get a little stale. Oh, for um, sure. That uh, right here, Nick, that transitions into my next point perfectly. Oh, excellent. That's literally what I wanted to talk about next. I thought you were going to bring up, a te I thought you were going to bring up a textbook and then <laughs> I was, and then I was going to be like, Oh, well, I got a textbook here too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. <laughs> Actually, I've got, I've got the, uh, you remember this guy modern yeah. bodybuilding it's been used so much it's in two parts <laughs> <laughs> i have it right over there on the bookshelf yeah that's funny so, anyway, so what's your well, what's your training been like lately man you know i have actually that's a really great um that's an interesting discussion that i can um i can talk about for a minute because I, I do think it's fascinating so one thing as i kind of coach myself to my pro card and you know all the research and classes and certifications things that i had to use to you know, basically get my body to where it wanted to be. I learned a heck of a lot about training and nutrition. And so when I was, when I was ready to, I kind of took that out of the bodybuilding space and applied it to the fitness model space. So within the past year and a half, my training and nutrition has changed completely. Um, as a bodybuilder, you, the, as a bodybuilder, the foundation work is there to be like a good quote fitness model. But if you're not perfectly in shape, you kind of look fat, you look, you look, you know, you look too big, um, a little bit too thick. And so I realized like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much well accomplished here in the bodybuilding space. I don't really, I'm not really focused on doing a whole, whole lot more here, but uh, this fitness modeling is so much more um, connected to everything else that I want to do. I want to focus more on the fitness modeling. So I've changed my, changed my diet, my training completely. I've actually been focusing on losing a lot of muscle mass and changing some proportions of my body. So um, when COVID hit, I did about uh, six months of legit, like serious fasting anywhere from, um, so I went from this six meals a day, 3,500 calories a day, as high carbs as, as possible to now I'm, I'm working myself into these 16, 18, 20 hour fasts. And I remember when I was getting ready for Australia, I was doing, um, I had this crazy training protocol, but I would do, um, I do like a 24 hour fast once a week, followed by a a tremendously high, high carb meal. And um, I just, and the reason I bring all that up is I was able to apply a lot of things that I learned and had studied and applied for my own physique and bodybuilding. And then kind of took that and, and re-engineered the model to change my physique towards more of this fitness modeling stuff. So I do a lot more fasting now. I do, um, I don't eat as many calories, but that's still because I'm trying to lose a little bit more muscle mass. And uh, my training has changed completely. So I only lift heavy like twice a week. I do heavy legs on Monday and I do 
like heavy deadlifts and some functional stuff on either like Friday, Saturday, everything else is um, just kind of like high volume, like kettlebell movements, body weight stuff, lots of cardio and running. So I told you, I, I walk a couple miles in the morning. I ride my bike 20 minutes to the gym. I ride my bike 20 minutes back. Um, I coach group fitness every, every night for like an hour, which is, you know, just like 60 minutes of body weight stuff. Um, so I've changed it around completely. Yeah. Energy expenditure through the roof, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's, it's been good. I've, I've actually lost about, um, probably about 15 pounds of like solid muscle. My strength is still there, but like the, the muscle volume up top is I've, I've slimmed it down and that's, I've totally done that on purpose. I've been trying to yeah, get a little yeah. bit more lifestyle lean and it's been very well received with all the work that I do. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Definitely reminds me of, uh, I'm gonna make a comparison here when Arnold was uh, coming off the last Mr. Olympia and they had him diet down for the first big film he was in. I can't remember what the, what the, um, I think it was like, uh, Conan the Barbarian. Was it? Was, yeah, it was one of those, but the guy what had him talking about. He, he dropped from like 240 to 210. Yeah. And, and it, it's so crazy because when you're in this headspace of, you know, bodybuilding, it's like, Oh, if I don't train today, I'm going to lose all my muscle. I have to eat, 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 eat. And if I miss one meal, it's all screwed up. No way. It takes a lot of effort to lose that body mass. And I found that out. It was, <laughs> it was so fat. It was, it was fascinating and it was frustrating. Um, it was fascinating because I had this conception that, that, you know, if I messed up one aspect of my training, you know, this whole time I was training for my pro card, I had this, this perception that, you know, if I messed up one day or one meal, it was like three steps in the backwards direction. Well, no, it turns out that's actually really difficult. You know, you'll deflate. But the second you get those carbs back, or you get back into a consistent training schedule, that strength goes right back up. The muscles get big again. Um, so it's a lot harder to lose that body mass than, than you thought. I mean, I had to diet very strategically and train very strategically. Yes. Yeah. And I really haven't trained like upper body four or five months. I mean, I haven't had a, a serious, legit, like 300 pound plus bench press session with, you know, heavy bicep curls and tricep extensions and, um, aside from like the deadlifts I do every week, I haven't really trained my upper body in a while. And my, and my, every time I touch a dumbbell, still my biceps, they kind of, they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, they're good problems. To, they're good problems to have, but it's also like, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's just not something you typically hear people say is like, Oh, I had to lose this lean mass, but man, I can tell you, I didn't necessarily, my goal wasn't to lose lean mass, but from January to April, I lost like 20 pounds and you just do, you really do feel so much better. Like yeah. when you consistently do cardio and, you know, you switch your eating strategy from, like you said, just pounding food to kind of more strategic, um, just the overall feeling of health is, is definitely improved. Do you, do you find that at all? Or how does it, how does it feel on a subjective level? I feel, healthier. I feel less, um, tied down to the gym. Yeah. My, my wellness, I have more of a wellness routine is what I would say now. Mm -hmm. um, where I was like prior to, and, and mind you, I enjoyed both. I enjoyed both sides of the coin, everything that I was doing, I enjoyed it. But I just remember like when I was in this, this really hardcore bodybuilding phase, it was train hard, like as hard as you can go every workout, eat as much as you can and, and, you know, never, never let up. Um, and, uh, I just don't, I don't, I feel better. I don't feel as obliged. I still go, I still work out every day. Um, and it's a serious training program and I have serious goals and, you know, diets tuned to it, but I just, I don't feel as like religiously committed to today has to be a bench press day and it has to fit into the program. So I feel better about it. And like my body was starting to hurt too. They're like, dude, once you get so far past your set point, it's mm. your body really starts to fight you and like the joints get achy. And, and uh, I was having trouble with, I have like this dislocated, um, rib and my thoracic spine have bothered me for a while and it's just you know my labrum was starting to like wear out and yeah bicep tendon was bothering me man and and so it's good to just kind of back off on those injuries definitely definitely yeah and like you said it it fits in with the the overall kind of uh vision for for what you're trying to do so that's awesome to see how it all follows suit yeah what have you been up to with your training recently yeah, definitely shifted more toward uh, hypertrophy because I was doing this like transformation challenge. Okay. For, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Renaissance periodization, but they did one from like January to uh, the end of March. 
I think I saw I saw a photo of you on Instagram with the with the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that it honestly went well. Uh, I was I was probably like ninety percent adherent. Could have done a little better, but I was happy <laughs> with it overall. Like I had good results, so it was good. Uh, con- uh, transformation went well, and I got really into like John Meadows style training. Did a lot of reading about uh, different like. Times. What was that? I've met him a few times. He lives yeah. in Columbus. Yeah, yeah. I always go out to American Barbell in Pickerington. Like, maybe I'll see him there, but I never have. <laughs> nice. I ran into him in the airport a few times. We were both flying out for the Olympia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. he seems like a very knowledgeable guy. So I kind of adapted that training style for a couple months there. Yeah, I like – Um, I've, I've listened to a lot of his – the content he has on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. He does a good job on YouTube. Whether it's like sometimes it goes really in depth, other times it's just really simple, straightforward tips for people to apply. Yeah, I particularly remember he was talking about. Um, I listened to like an hour long video of him talking about like hormones, mm-hmm. which I found really fascinating. He was just kind of talking about basically all the protocols that he uses and things. And yeah, you know, I always try to stay informed. Just about, I don't discriminate with <laughs> pretty much what I watch when it comes to like health and wellness. Yeah, so he's a cool guy. He's one of those old school. Um, he's one of those like the, the one of the like the OGs, mm-hmm. at least in my mind. Definitely, so, definitely. That's cool. So you've been following a lot of uh, or trying to adopt a lot of his training philosophies. Yeah, I I kind of like take everything with a grain of salt and just throw it into the culmination of my knowledge. But yeah, yeah, like especially his intensity techniques. Like he has some crazy. He calls them like death sets, not drop sets, where like you gradually work up to like four sets and on the the fourth or fifth set you're hitting a drop set of everything and then you're doing like an isometric hold and then a stretch you know I kind of remember you doing some semi-similar things with the uh what was it like f7 or or something the fascial stretching yeah yeah that stuff is crazy so it's been cool to just experiment with different things yeah the stretching of the fascia is one of the signals to the to the brain to like promote hypertrophy growth so the idea is you get a bunch of uh, like blood volume in the muscle itself so you know it's it's the cross-sectional volume is expanded larger than what its norm is and then you put that muscle into like an extended position where it's kind of flexed maximally at both sides the idea is that it's flexed as much as it can and there's extra volume in there so it's stretching mm-hmm. out the fascia it's really painful <laughs> yeah it's you awful good at the end yeah i remember uh when you came in i was in Indy that summer of 2018 and you were doing a lot of that and a lot of, uh, oh my gosh, the term Plus is low friction. Yeah, BFR. BFR. Yeah, yeah, dude, that was gnarly. <laughs> it dude, it's like a whole nother level of yeah. pain. Yeah, um, yeah, the BFR stuff because you almost instantaneously go into the, like that lactic acid um, mm-hmm. debt or deprivation. Whereas you know, in a, if, when you're not restricting blood flow, you kind of slide into it. You know that 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 burn comes on very slowly, but it's, right you know, it's kind of starts from the outside and with the BFR, it's like starts burning from the core. And then, uh, um, it comes in. Yeah, dude, those are not for the faint of heart. <laughs> and it's not. For hey. the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's been cool to see how your training's changed over the years, man, from like the occasional cig at basement lifts that I saw you to, uh, to that type of training. And now more so like wellness and, and for the modeling, it's all, yeah. it's all, it's evolved to, to what you need. So it's always appreciate a good that. I've been working on my calves. You guys can't make fun of me for my calves anymore. Dude, tell me what you're doing for that at some point because I'm struggling. I walk. Dude, I'm serious. Yeah. It's just walking. Right when COVID hit, I just started walking all the time, mm-hmm. like I mentioned earlier. And I got a 40-pound vest. So I walked I, I walked with a vest. And it's I, I'm actually – I'm not really even training my calves in the gym anymore. I'm just walking all the time. And that's all I needed. So That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I need to get a vest or maybe I'll make one. I've been making some interesting gym equipment lately for this little home gym setup I have. So yeah, you're getting the wheels turning up here. Good for pull-ups, training the, like your, your lung capacity too, or like the, the strength Mm -hmm. of your, your lungs, um, like raise weight off your shoulders. So you can take a big, deep breath before you squat. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. So as you mentioned before, you know, you kind of, you, uh, when you have a passion, you definitely go all in on it to, to learn and do it to the best of your ability. So I'm very curious, 
if you would share some of your good go-to learning sources for all the things that you're passionate about right now. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, one thing that I would, um, I think there's a, there's a few really good comments that I can make that I, I, that I think are helpful. Um, in the age of the internet, information is so easy to access and it's double-edged sword, right? Because that means everybody and their mother can say whatever they want about the topic. And if they phrase it the right way, they're an expert on it. <laughs> they're, they convince you that they're expert on it. I think that's where a lot of like the confusion comes with like the basics of nutrition and things. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to find a mentor um, or somebody that you trust their, their source as a source of information versus blindly like Googling something. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, when it comes like health and wellness, I really like Lane Norton, Dr. Lane Norton. He's kind of like a no bullshit dude, mm -hmm. um, has a PhD in like, um, like protein synthesis studies or something like that. I've met him a few times. I've got all of his books. Um, he's a legit academic. He coaches a lot of people. So he is probably my number one resource for um, like, if he, if I see him talking about something on his Instagram that puts it on my radar. I'm like, hmm, yeah, if Lane Norton thinks it's cool. I might check it out. So um, I guess generally speaking, what I'm saying there is uh, it's easy to Google things. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, if you need just like a quick bit of info, but if you're really trying to learn or get better at something, I think it's important to have a mentor, focus on a mentor that you trust. And on that note, you can't have too many mentors, right? There's, if there's, <laughs> if there's too many dicks on the dance floor, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I love There's it. so much conflicting information and, you know, and this person's, this person's philosophy may fit well within their strategy of how they're applying things. But if you, if you cherry pick information from people, it's kind of, it's more difficult to, to integrate if you're, if you're trying to leverage somebody's experience and their whole process is designed off of, you know, doing things a certain way. Um, I like mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The journal, I'm sure you've heard of that. And um, typically I'll read like the NCBI, um, like look for some studies on there. Um, on the internet. YouTube's great too. All of these guys have YouTube channels. So Lane Norton has a YouTube channel. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say those, those are probably my biggest, like the biggest ways. Um, I'm very self, I'm largely self-taught. So I do a lot of like, um, like YouTube explanations and things, but I stick to the sources that I, I stick to the guys that I know are credible sources. Yeah. And if, I mean, anybody, I'm sure you, if we could all raise hands right now, everybody, I'm sure everybody would agree with me. Like, it's very easy to get lost in the sauce trying to, you know, if you just, if you Google something, or if you look for, um, you know, something on YouTube is find 25 people all saying this, all saying different things. Yeah. So for me, it comes back to staying consistent with your sources and, and feeling that those sources are credible. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. Did that, did that help? Uh, answer no, definitely. That's, I think that's a great take, I think. Yeah. And the other thing that I'll add to that is, um, you know, when it comes to with your health and wellness, as you know, somebody who's ex extremely qualified like yourself, I'm sure you'll agree with, with what I say. Um, it's like 80% of 80% of it's by the book, right? 80% of it's like, yeah, this is how the body works. This is what the studies show. This is what's supposed to happen. Um, but you have to try it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's that 20% personal component, which I think is important. I think a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of people miss out on, they just read one thing and you know, it's the end all be all. It's like, no, you have to, you have to try, you have to see how does it integrate with your style, with your, with your routines, with your preferences, how does your body respond to that specific stimulus? Um, right. So there's like an 80% by the book thing. And then there's also 20%. It's like, look, dude, you just gotta, you gotta do it and you gotta see how it works for you. And then mm -hmm. adjust that based off of like personal experience and results. 100%. Yeah. Like you said, where, where people can kind of fall victim to gurus, you can also fall victim to just being overly zealous about like only listening to research and the science. Yeah, but if you think exactly. about it, like the practitioners kind of drove science, like the things that, you know, old school bodybuilders might've done or old school powerlifters. A lot of that is what we see in, in the literature, you know, they're testing these things and, you know, reviewing it on mass and all that. So hundred percent agree with yeah. that. So Nick, where can the people find you, man? You can find me all over. The no, <laughs> honestly, honestly, at this point on the internet, um, 
I'm, I stay pretty active on my social media. That's kind of the main hub for all things Nick Topol. So on Instagram, it's just at, it's super easy, it's not creative at all, at Nick Topol, N-I-C-K-T-O-P-E-L. And then also on uh, the model trainers. So at um, model underscore trainers, which is my um, personal training company that I, I run with the crew. And then I've also started a, um, this kind of this really cool joint venture with uh, Lifting Labs which is uh, basically we apply all these fitness modeling techniques and use blood flow restriction training to create like this really interesting integrated training approach to like bringing up la lagging body parts. Um, so you'll see, yeah, you'll see more on that, but um, yeah. So my personal page, model trainers, um, lifting labs, and I'm on YouTube. I do a lot of like collabs and podcasts and things, but I'd say all things Nick Topol lead kind of back to Instagram at Nick Topol. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely link that in the description. If you're looking for the easy access or like he said, Go ahead and follow, us, brother. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and follow Nick on Instagram. I really appreciate that, guys. Nick, I really do appreciate you coming on, man. Talking, talking about training, business, what you do. It's been cool to catch up and and cool to learn in the process because you definitely did a great job of providing the value along with some some great stories. So I appreciate you, man. Oh, I appreciate you appreciate me, man. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's good to be back in the podcast. It's actually kind of cool how. How quick time flies. I can't believe I still remember taking that uh, that call with you back in the room. I remember where I was sitting and uh, and everything. I was sitting on the chair with the laptop on my uh, thing. I was eating a bowl of rice too. I yeah, man. That. So no, it's cool. I was trying to stay in touch with, you know, good buddies like uh, like yourself doing cool things and and um, appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you and hopefully provide some useful insights to everybody who's listening. So 100%. Guys, Thank you all for checking out episode 34 of the Trainer Scoop. If you wouldn't mind, once again, go support Nick, but support the podcast as well. If you're watching on YouTube, hit Nick with a like, maybe subscribe. We'll get Nick on here for a workout collab eventually. Hit the notification bell if you want to see that come down later the road. Uh, if you're listening on Apple, I always appreciate reviews on Apple Podcasts. And then, I don't know, there's not much you can do on Spotify except for share, but I guess, yeah, share it around on Spotify too. Always appreciated. <laughs> i'll do my part to get the name out or get the word out too i appreciate that man we will catch you in the next episode thanks again for listening